everyone, Kelly here. And today I have a video that I've never really done before. And basically I just want you to kind of help me choose some books that I can buy soon. Basically I have some fun money that I've saved up because I haven't been buying much like books or anything like that in the last couple months. And I find I have like, you know, a good chunk of money and I just deciding from my wish list what I want to buy. So I thought I'd get your input and just tell you some of the things that are on my wish list. Um, and you let me know if you've read some of them, if you're interested in some of them, like what sounds good and what I should pick up so you can kind of help me make a decision. So I'm just going to go through these and kind of like order by like category genre. Um, just so you know, in the background, you know, it's hard for me to find a time to film. So my kids are playing in the background, so you might hear them. They're playing with the water table. So there might be like yelling, playing noises, but this is how I can do things now is do it while they're here because I don't really have like a big clump of time when you know they're at school or napping it just isn't like that anymore so let's start with the first category which is sci-fi and so the first one I have on my list is The Humans by Matt Haig and this is a book about a alien who comes to earth because I guess some mathematician has created had some discovery that is supposed to be really bad for the universe and so this alien's coming to take that man's body and make sure that it doesn't like get out his his discovery um but while he's doing his mission he starts to learn more about the human race and i think he starts trying to decide if he actually wants to like complete his mission and leave or if he wants to stay on america uh, on earth i don't know I actually don't know what country he's in, but yes, whether he wants to stay on earth or not. And I've just heard good things that it's like funny and interesting. And so I've been wanting to read this one for a long time. Another one I want to read is a middle grade novel called The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. And this is about a robot who basically wakes up on this deserted island and doesn't know how she got there, has no like knowledge of what she was doing there or what was happening before she woke up or however came up to be on this island and has to survive so it's like a robot survival story i've heard great things about this book and i've heard a lot of people say it's a great read aloud for like the family and i'm kind of collecting books like that so that we can start reading them out loud together at dinner time or other meals or in the evening as a family so that one sounded really interesting to me the next one is The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Kowal, is that how you say it? Um, and this is kind of like an alternative history book because I believe it takes place in the 1950s. But in this version of the 1950s, there was a meteorite that hit um, the United States and like took away like half of the eastern coast or something like that. And so they're afraid that this is going to turn the way of the dinosaurs where it's going to lead to extinction. And so they, the United States is trying to like speed up the colonization of space. And it's about this group of lady astronauts as far as I can tell. So I think it's a kind of alternative history that's like feminist. Um, and I've heard really great things about this book specifically. I haven't heard much about the sequels in the series. They, I don't know if they're direct sequels or just like a companion series set, but I've heard really good things about this first book, so I figured I wanted to read it soon. And now the next few are dystopian, so I don't know if you account that in sci-fi or its own category. So the next one is Not a Drop to Drink by Mindy McGinnis. I had read a Mindy McGinnis book recently that I absolutely loved, and so I wanted to try one of her older books, and I've just really been in a dystopian mood or post-apocalyptic kind of book mood, and so I thought I would pick up her post-apocalyptic series. And this one is at a time where water has become really scarce and we're following this girl who um, lives, I think she owns a lot of land, like her family owns a lot of land and they have a pond on their property. And so she has to like protect her pond um, because people will try to steal water from other people's land and all that stuff. And I thought Dry by Neil Schusterman was really fascinating because of this whole like, you know, water something everybody needs and when it's scarce, it leads to a lot of you know, erratic behavior and things like that. And so I thought this would be a really interesting and gritty dystopian to read when people are like searching for water and protecting their water source and stuff like that. So I'm excited to give this one a try. Another one is Moon of the Crusted Snow by Wabashog Rice. And I believe this is a First Nations Canadian 
um, dystopian book or post-apocalyptic where this um, First Nations community is kind of protecting their area during an apocalypse and they're kind of surviving as a community, but then outsiders come into their community um, because they're thriving and the outsiders want to be a part of it. And so I think there's a little struggle between that and how to survive with as a larger group and things like that. And um, I've, I've just heard some good things about this one and wanted to give it a try. And then the last one is a pretty popular one and that is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. And I think this is both like a dystopian and a fantasy book combined because I believe it is like a whole new world like it's not earth and um, this world has already kind of had its apocalypse and is falling apart and I think it might be falling apart again um, and I don't really know it's like one of those things where it's a popular book but I don't know a lot about it but I've heard great things about N.K. Jemisin so I wanted to give this one a try I did try to read this on audiobook once but because it has some multiple perspectives and one of the perspectives is in second person I had trouble following the audiobook so I think having the physical copy would be better so that's all the sci-fi ones I'm interested in um, I have one horror because I'm not really a horror person but this one specifically kind of seems more like a sci-fi horror and just seemed interesting to me and that's Into the Drowning Deep by Meyer Grant and this is kind of like a killer mermaid story so there was a um, ship of scientists that had gone out to see if mermaids were real and then they disappeared and so I believe this is the sister of somebody that was on that ship we're following her as she and a group of people go out to see what happened to the original um, voyage and I think they encounter killer mermaids from what I've heard from other people and it just sounds interesting and I'm hoping that it will be the kind of horror because I don't like gruesome horror so I'm hoping this is more like suspenseful horror with something lurking in the water um, and I hope that'll be something I will enjoy and I'm, I want to get this before October to read it in kind of that spooky October time. And then I have a group of fantasy books and I would say most of these are very very popular on booktube and so I so it's like even though they're popular I don't really fully know what they're about and I feel like that happens all the time with books that people talk about constantly is that people never really talk about what they're really about and you just hear like oh everybody loves this series so I kind of looked at the synopsis and trying to figure out what these series are about actually so the first one I'm interested in is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb and this is the beginning of like a long series like I think this is like there's like three trilogies or something like that that co combined to be one long series and I had no idea what this was about even though everybody talks about it but when I looked it up it sounds like Fitz our main character is the like illegitimate child of a royal and has kind of lived as an outcast as a child and then suddenly has brought into the royal world to become an assassin and I think we just follow his like whole life journey um, so I've heard it's kind of slow and character driven so I wanted to at least give the first book a try at some point and then another one that's really popular that I don't know really what it's about is The Diviners by Libba Bray and all I know is that it takes place in the 1920s and it's supernatural and I think there's like romance and murder and I don't know paranormal things happening that's all I know about but everybody like raves about this so I wanted to give this one a try um, and then I have a middle grade one that's really popular now which is Nevermore The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend and this is about a young girl who is cursed and everybody in her town believes that she's the cause of a lot of bad events and then she suddenly swept away into this magical world of Nevermore and has to go through these trials in order to stay in that world I believe um, and it just sounds really magical and fun and I was waiting to get this until a couple books had been out because I hate kind of waiting a long time for the next book and I don't know how long this series is going to be I might still have to wait a long time but at least there's more than one book out right now so I could like try it and have something else to read after I finish the first one and then the next one is The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch and this is one I'm not quite sure about because I know it's taking a long time for the author to write the next book um, and I don't know like do they end in cliffhangers will I be like waiting too long for the next one but it does sound interesting I believe it's about a group of people who are kind of thieves and 
morally gray characters and the adventures they get up to. And some of my favorite booktubers love this book, so I thought I should at least try the first one. And I've heard people that don't even really read like epic fantasy really love this, even though it's like a thick fantasy book. Um, so I wanted to at least give it a try. My husband's read all three and loved them. And so I was like, well, maybe I should try them. And then the last fantasy one is Soulless by Gail Carriger. And I believe this is steampunk and like paranormal fantasy with romance and stuff like that. So it's a lot of things going on. Like I think there's vampires and all kinds of other creatures with abilities and stuff like that. And it takes place during Victorian times, I believe. I don't know exactly. I've just heard really great things about it. It sounds like it would be a lot of fun because every, when everybody talks about it, they say it's a good time and just really like, not necessarily like epic in any way, but just fun. Um, and that sounds great. And then the next group of genres I have is contemporary. The first one is Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. I've been wanting to read this book for a long time and I think I just need to get around to finally picking it up and buying it um, because this is about, I don't know how many siblings, three or four siblings that um, were adopted or in foster care. So they're birth siblings that haven't met until they were older. So I think they're either upper teens or younger adults. And now they're meeting for the first time and kind of what that is like and their interactions now that they've like, you know, grown up not knowing each other. Um, and that just sounds really interesting to me since my kids have birth siblings out there that someday they might meet. So I think it's a book that I really should read and I want to read, but I'm worried that it'll break my heart as well. So I just need to get around to reading it. Another one is Americana by Chimamande Ngozi Adichie. And I've loved her nonfiction, so I want to try one of her fiction books. It's just it, her fiction is so thick, like the books are so thick. But I've heard a lot of good things about this one. I believe it's about a couple who were leaving Nigeria and one went to America and the other one went to live in London. And so they were living apart for a long time. And then this is like them, I think it follows their lives over like 10 to 15 years and them reuniting and all that. Um, and I've just heard it's kind of like an epic kind of um, saga type of book. And then something a little lighter is The Bookish Life of Nina Hill by Abby Waxman. And I've just heard this is a sweet book. I believe it's about a, a young woman who works in a bookstore, leads, leads a quiet life, and then suddenly her father dies. And it turns out she has all these brothers and sisters and nieces and nephews that she didn't know. And suddenly everybody wants to get to know her and kind of changes her life from a quiet life to something that's a bit up in the air. So I just think it will be a nice sweet story to read, hopefully. Um, and then another one is Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center. I've just heard a lot of good things about Catherine Center lately. And this is one of her newer books. And I think it's about a female firefighter who has been working as a firefighter for a long time, but then her mother gets sick. So she moves to a new town to be with her mother. And there the fire house is kind of like the like old boys club and isn't quite sure about letting a woman in and so I think there's a lot of like things about being a female firefighter when the men don't accept you I think there's a romance and then probably stuff going on with her mother who is dying or is really sick I'm not sure whether she's actually dying or just sick um and so it sounds like a good story and the last contemporary is Kim Ji Young born 1982 by Cho Namju and I've heard so many good things about this book um I believe this is Korean. Now I probably should have looked this up, but so this is about a woman who, um, she, she would be my age cause she's born in 1982. And I've just heard this is kind of like the every woman book that like all women will relate to this story. And it's about a, a woman who gives up her job to stay home with her child. Cause that's what's expected of her. And kind of, she starts acting weird and things are going on and they kind of go through her whole life and kind of the expectations that have been put on her as a woman. And I just think this is something I would really relate to as somebody who was born at about the same time and just lived through those expectations. I believe, like I said, it's Korean, but I've heard that like all women across the world would relate to a lot of the things that happen in this woman's life. And so I just really want to give this a try. Um, I also just want to read more translated work. So I think this would be a great one to pick up because I've heard excellent things about it. And then I have one historical fiction, and that is 
because it's not usually my main genre, but every once in a while I want to read one. And this is called Ross Poldark by Winston Graham. And this is an older series. There's like a ton of books in the series. And I just want to give it a try because I've heard a lot of people really love it. And I thought I would just try the first book and then see if I like it. But I think this is like an epic like family saga. Like each book covers an another person in the Poldark family. There was a show made out of it and all this stuff. And so it's just really popular. And I want to try the first one. I believe the first one is about Ross who returns home from war and everything's different. Like I think his wife thought he was dead. So she's like engaged to another man and just everything's different now that he's home from the war. And so I thought I would at least try the first one. And then I the last category I have is a group of nonfiction books. And so these cover a wide range of topics because I just have a lot of interests when it comes to nonfiction. Like I never know what's going to like people will do a review video and I'm like that sounds interesting and yeah they're very widespread so the first one is called the read aloud family making meaningful and lasting connections with your kids by Sarah McKenzie and basically this is just a book about reading to you, your kids or reading aloud as a family and I think it also has a bunch of book lists in the book like of read aloud books and it's just something that as a family we're really getting into now that we have a five-year-old and an almost three-year-old and we really want to be reading more together especially with the pandemic that we're basically just the four of us together all the time that we want to have some more like meaningful together time you know away from screens you know reading together sharing wonderful stories because I've always believed that like books a good story is a good story it doesn't matter if it's made for children if it's made for adults if it's a good story it's worth reading at all ages obviously there's adult books that kids shouldn't read but kids books that are worth reading are worth reading for adults too and I just want to read together more as a family and I think this book would be a good resource for that and then the next one is called Dead Mountain, The Untold True Story of the Diet Law Pass Incident by Donnie Eicher. And this one is about a true event that happened. I can't remember when this was, but there was a group of nine hikers that went out in the mountains in Russia and they all turned up dead of mysterious circumstances. And I don't think that anybody knows for sure what happened to them, but this is like one person like investigating the circumstances around the event and giving his theory and I think it's kind of the theory that most people back um, from my research and stuff like that I want to read it and like do a little more research about it I've, I've listened to a couple of podcasts about the event and it just seems fascinating to me and then the next one is the girl with seven names a North Korean defector story by Hyun So Lee and I've heard a lot of people lately reviewing this book and really enjoying it and I have not read yet a book about somebody that has escaped North Korea and their life before and after that and I know there's several books like that on the market and I just happen to have heard about this from several booktubers I watched recently so this is one I was thinking about getting and picking up and then I could always read some other ones that I have seen around if this one is interesting and I wanted to hear more perspectives. And then the next one is called Be the Bridge, Pursuing God's Heart for Racial Reconciliation by Latasha Morrison. And I've just been really interested since we've been talking a lot more about Black Lives Matter and like learning more about racism, especially in America. Um, I've been really fascinated about the like role of the church in racial, racial reconciliation and about how the church is still very segregated in America um, and this book specifically she is writing about how christians should take the role as leaders in race racial reconciliation and in that and you know kind of like working through those racial tensions and so i'm just really fascinated by this topic and i really want to pick this one up i've heard great things about this book and the last one is mighty be our powers how sisterhood prayer and sex changed a national war by lema gabawi I might have not said that right. If I buy this, I'll learn how to say her name. But, so this is about a woman that was kind of a younger woman during the Liberian Civil War. And um, it really changed her life a lot and a lot of the lives of women in, around her community. And she realized that um, women needed to come together to 
be a force to kind of change what was happening in their nation. And so she started this organization. Sorry, I'm looking because it just seems fascinating and I just don't know a lot about it. So she helped organize and lead this organization called the Liberian Mass Action for Peace, which is a group of Christian and Muslim women who had did public protest and confronted some of the um, leaders and even went on a sex strike and just like how they helped to lead their nation into peace. And it just sounds really amazing. And I really want to read it. So those are all the books that are currently on like my main wish list. There are other books I want, like a lot of new releases, but I don't usually buy new releases because I don't like hardback books. So I usually get those from the library. So these are all books that have been out long enough to have a paperback version. And there are ones that are kind of like at the top of my wish list. So let me know if you've read any of these, if you think they're really great, or if you just heard the synopsis and thought, oh, that's really interesting. I think you should get that one and read it soon and review it. Let me know your thoughts. I'm not going to do like a poll or anything. I just want you to write in the comments which ones you think I should get. And then, you know, like the ones that get the most kind of comments or votes or opinions. Um, also give me your negative thoughts of any of these you didn't like. And then I'll kind of collate that and pick ones enough because I don't know, depending on how much they cost, I don't know how many I'm going to buy, probably around five, um, just depending on the price of each book. Um, and I'll just gather out however many you guys say that are interesting and buy how many I can afford in my fun mini. I love to hear all of your thoughts down below and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.